Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Kremti News First at Four. I'm Tom Sherry. Welcome, everyone. I'm Whitney Ward. As the number of people hospitalized with coronavirus continues to rise, Providence Health has announced plans today to postpone some elective surgeries right here in Spokane. Yeah, those include surgeries at both Sacred Heart and Holy Family Hospitals. Those changes, well, they start today. Providence says they're going to work with each patient on a case-by-case -case basis to reschedule elective surgeries. Now, by doing that, the hospitals hope to conserve critical care beds and staff members. Just last week, Sacred Heart reported that it was treating the highest number of COVID patients since the pandemic first started. 90 people were hospitalized between Sacred Heart and Holy Family Hospitals. The Spokane Regional Health District says it supports Providence postponing those elective surgeries and noted that coronavirus patients often require more care and staff than other patients. So, so the impact is, is uh, ripples through the whole system and I, I think this uh, precautionary step on the part of Providence is, is a good step to make sure that the resources are still there. The health district also says hospitals have been seeing an increase in all types of patients over the last several months, including COVID patients. The district also stressed the surgeries being postponed are elective ones and that people who need hospital care should still go see their providers. Also new at four tonight, the Spokane Regional Health District now reporting another 275 coronavirus cases just today in Spokane County. There were also three new deaths reported, now bringing the total to 270. 94 Spokane County residents are currently hospitalized. Mm -hmm. And thousands of lives have been completely changed because of this pandemic. We know loved ones have been separated and hospitals have had their hands full with new protocols. Yeah, these changes impact patients across the board, including ones without COVID related issues. Haley Moran is a 29 year old woman from Sandpoint fighting for her life at Sacred Heart right now. Over the weekend, she had to be airlifted to Spokane after a massive pulmonary embolism. While she remains on life support in the hospital, her family hasn't been able to visit her because of the coronavirus. But I do understand they did tell me they're very short staffed right now on top of it and they're doing everything they can and they assured us that she's not alone and they're taking good care of her, and I do believe that. But it doesn't allow them to be there with her, and that's right. the painful part. Mm. The only contact that family has had with Haley came over FaceTime on one of the nurse's phones. Her parents, though, may soon get a waiver to visit. And coming up tonight at 6, Creme 2's Brandon Jones has that full story. All right, Tom, let's take a quick moment to sure. take a break from the coronavirus coverage. Let's talk about another really, really <laughs> nice looking it day, was, wasn't it? but very, very cold. <laughs> yeah, it was very, very Oof. cold. And we have the fog and low clouds, at least here on the South Hill. How about you on the north side? Did you see that early in the morning? We did. Yes. Yeah, and I was like, oh, oh are we going to be able to burn this off? And we did. <laughs> so we enjoyed the blue sky. But again, that cold breeze blowing out of the northeast made it feel awfully cool. Uh, 36 degrees, that's your current temperature. Look at the radar. And again, we're not seeing any uh, precipitation occurring anywhere across the Pacific Northwest. So look for another repeat of today. Tomorrow we'll look for freezing fog to set up overnight. It'll be a very frosty start to your morning with a low of 25 degrees. We're hoping to burn off the low clouds. If we do, we'll see mostly sunny skies again with a high near 39 degrees. If we don't burn off the cloud cover, then it won't get that warm. It'll remain much cooler for the weekend right now. We're going to be positive here and say that we think we'll burn off the fog and low clouds in the morning and then enjoy partly cloudy skies could see daytime highs in the low 40s. I'll check the rest of your seven day forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Reminding you also that this February, Spokane voters will be asked to decide on a replacement levy for Spokane Public Schools. SPS will be explaining exactly what that levy will fund and how much it's going to cost homeowners. That's at tonight's school board meeting. But unlike a bond which pays for construction for new schools or to updates for security or sports stadiums, this replacement levy will fund educational programs and activities that are not completely funded by the state. For instance, the state only provides funding for five school nurses for the entire school district. That replacement levy would fund another 36 school nurses, school counselors, behavior specialists, special education services and technology support are also funded by the levy. 
So the big question is, how much is it going to cost the rest of us? Well, Spokane Public Schools is asking homeowners to approve a tax rate which starts at $2.40 per thousand dollars of your home's worth and then increases to $2.50 per thousand. That's actually less than what homeowners are paying now for the levy that is about to expire. But if you would like to learn more, that virtual school board meeting is at 7 o'clock tonight. You can get more information on creme.com. And tonight is the first ever winter market at Riverfront Park. It also started at three o'clock today and it's going to go on until seven o'clock tonight. Our Amanda Rowley actually is joining us live <laughs> from that market right this minute. It's up next to the U.S. Pavilion and Amanda, what are visitors expecting there tonight? Well, Tom and Whitney, they can definitely expect to get into the holiday spirit if they haven't already. Now, behind me are about a dozen vendors right up next to the pavilion, which here in a matter of minutes, it will be starting its holiday light show and it'll go on through the evening. Now this is how the flow will work if you're coming to visit the first ever winter market. Guests are expected to enter here at this gate on the west side of the pavilion and then they will walk through and they can meander through and check out all these vendors and they're going to be regulating how many people to ensure that social distancing. Now you can expect to find several different vendors. There's artisans, baked goods, produce, beer, hard cider, you name it. Now the vendors are spread out outside and there are a few inside in that building portion of the pavilion. There will only be so many people allowed inside the pavilion as well just to regulate that spacing. But this event has definitely been set up with a lot of space so you and your family can enjoy shopping the winter market safely. Cool thing is entrance is free and this will be held every Wednesday evening until January 27th. It's the city's creative and alternative approach to supporting local businesses this holiday season. Now, I will have to say coming back out live here, it is a bit chilly, so plan on dressing warm or or check this out. We've got a coffee stand, so you can definitely purchase a hot drink when you come down here with the family tonight. Tom, Whitney? Well, I saw uh, Amanda with the video. It looks like some of the events are inside as well as outside. So what are the mask requirements? Yeah, it's a good question, Tom. So masks are required whether you are coming through in the outside portion or going inside. Now, if you do not have a mask or you forget yours, the Shriners Hospital is here right as you enter. They're selling them for about $5 and all proceeds from those sales will be going back to the Shriner Children's Hospital. Reporting from Riverfront Park, Amanda Rowley, Krem 2 News. I think it's a great idea it and it's such a, a perfect option for us to be able to support local. Yep. You may not necessarily know who to go to if you want to buy local, but that's a perfect option. So And it's beautiful Riverfront Park. I know. <laughs> What's not to love? Yeah. All right. Well,